Okay, uh, hello everybody. Um, welcome to a, uh, I guess, a m slightly more formal boff than I originally intended, a birds of a feather. Uh, basically, I have been helping some clients get their e-commerce sites up. I've, uh, I was basically a latecomer to Ubercart, even though I knew it uh, about it, uh, I knew what was going on, and really to me it was like, hey, that's Drupal, I can do it anytime, I'm sure, pick it up. Uh, well, I've been picking it up more, and I found out from a client uh, who called me up one day that there are some new regulations, some new rules, some new assessments companies need to go through um, for accepting credit cards, payments, being online, a bunch of stuff. So basically I had a client call and said, hey, do you know what's up with this PCI compliance? He didn't actually technically say that. He said, yo, what's up with Visa? Uh, and uh, I was like, what do you mean? He goes, yeah, there's a bunch of shit we got to go through now. I don't know what this means and there's paperwork and I don't know. And he's like, can you please read this for me? Because the guy just really didn't know. He's, you know. he's good at his business, but that's about it. So I said, okay, send over the visa crap and I'll read it through. And so I found this thing on my PCI compliance. Okay, so I started doing more reading and I started checking everything out. And I realized, oh, wow, this is a really big issue. And I have heard nobody discuss it. Dave had brought up something about PCI compliance and credit cards many, many months before I even kind of got into this. And then I go, wait a minute. Somebody did ping about PCI compliance. And then I kind of went back and there was very little info. So what I figured is I've done a few things to get closer to uh, full PCI compliance for one of my clients that I'm building an Ubercard site on. And I have information that I can share. It is as much as I've been able to gather, but there is a lot more information because there's a lot of reading involved. In fact, every PDF that I've been able to find, the minimum number of pages has been like 34. So imagine that multiplied by eight. PDFs and some of them are really, really, really long. So I haven't had the time to do everything, but since my client doesn't make more than a million dollars a year, there are different regulations and that's what we're gonna actually find out today. So PCI compliance for the new age, there's, this is affecting commerce on and offline. This is why it really tripped me out. I was like, wow, I thought this was really only for accepting credit cards online. No, it's all new standards and practices. Now, I don't have a lot of bullet points. I really only have three slides, but the third slide is all the links that I've been able to collect that I felt are good readings to get you going very quickly, and some of them are also the official places to go to uh, to find out more. So uh, I'll just cover the offline because this might give you a good idea of what's really even happening as a requirement for a company that's not even selling online yet, okay? Um, but basically, every computer has to be password protected if there's going to be financial information, credit card info. So if you have a quote-unquote QuickBooks person, right, you know, just one person on the side and all they do is QuickBooks all day, if their computer is not password protected, eh, you're, you're already not compliant. If it's password protected but the screensaver is not password protected after a minute, eh, you are not compliant. There are all these little things. So basically you just have to set up an offline everything has to be secure where uh, an employee trusted or not can't run over to that person's computer when they go to the bathroom real quick and try to steal off some credit card financial information okay so everything has to be in a sense locked down in that way your processes so there's a lot of weird things like that and I thought that was very interesting but also especially because of Windows vulnerabilities Windows has to be up to date. That is part of the assessment and the compliance. Now, when you start making more than a million transactions a year with Visa and making more than so much money, I'll have a chart, uh, they actually do on-site compliance analysis. If you are not that high, then you can do your own assessment uh, and they won't basically send somebody over to look and make sure that that computer's password protected, yes. Is that a million transactions? Uh, the, the chart, I was just trying to use a, a vague number just to make it big, but you'll have a chart and you'll get to see. Uh, and it's also in the links, of course. Uh, so it's very important that you know what tier that you're in or your client business is in. And then they have, again, different regulations. Some are requirements, some are recommendations. And a lot of them are self-assessments. But when you start getting higher, those have to be validated by a third-party source. And it's not cheap. I promise you that. Um, so, uh, like I said, up-to-date software, antivirus has to be on there, you know, uh, I'm sure even anything you do extra firewall will help, but basically these are the 
bare minimum things. And for us as technology people, yeah, we're always making sure our software is up to date. You know, we have a probably antivirus or firewall on our systems. So, so for us as developers and integrators, yeah, we're protecting ourselves. Now our client cannot forego that thirty dollars for McAfee anymore every year. You know, it's 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 going to hurt his business, and he's not going to be able to be compliant. Yes. I work on other systems like have little back systems. Same thing, screensaver, password protect, password protect, log into the thing, antivirus should be installed, uh, and then also the software operating system needs to be uh, up to date. So it, the platform is not specific at all. Um, moving on, so this is one bullet point of offline. There are so many different things, so many different tiers, so the links I'm providing you guys is where you guys are going to be able to jump off and find out who, I mean, where you are in the, the whole scheme of things. So. Some of the links I have here is like PCI uh, security standards.org. That is the official organization. All the official info is there. It is very heavy, heavy reading on that site. So the other links I'm providing you are a lot of the blogs or other business sites that have been kind of distilling that information, making it quick. And in fact, there's one that offers a video to just give a brief overview. I sent my client the video I'll show you real quick. And he understood a lot. And it wasn't even heavily technical. Like it was just some basic business information and he felt comfortable after that. So whatever I was doing technical, he felt that he was able to support my, uh, by answering my questions properly uh, from just a very short video. Uh, Neospire.net, this is a, a blog post, uh, Misconceptions. We're going to actually load up that page so we can kind of just brief uh, through those. Uh, so Misconceptions of PCI Compliance. Uh, Instacarma is a blog. I am a big fan of Web Host Manager cPanel. Uh, some people use Plesk, uh, Webmin, uh, it, Virtual Min, Webmin is actually one of our sponsors. But I use cPanel on a lot of my clients' sites, uh, not cPanel, but Web Host Manager. So this blog post had a lot of information and details of things I had to do in Apache, uh, and we're going to look at those. So he had a lot of good stuff that pertained to my client and my server setup. I'm sharing that link with you because a lot of the information, you can pluck that right out of his bullet points and apply it to your own servers by hand or whatever you guys have. Uh, Authorize.net. Authorize.net is a merchant company, uh, so they provide you know basically the the gateway and they charge the cards and stuff. So my client uses Authorize.net, um, and they have a good link uh, plus videos, and it's uh, a short link. I'll show that to you because that actually has a very easy tier um, uh, breakdown of the different uh, transaction sizes. PayPal. PayPal has been really pushing this. I found out. I didn't really notice. I didn't pay attention, like I said before. But once I started. PayPal is actually at the front more than all these other companies in providing information to their customers. Uh, in fact, somebody told me uh, online when I was asking them questions, they said, PayPal right now is probably the only company that can really say, we are ready for your PCI compliance. And you do have to do a few things, but you don't have to do all the things everybody else has to do. Uh, and I don't know what part of PayPal's tier system that is, if that's PayPal Pro or PayPal Basic. So I don't know what it is, but PayPal has a whole site, uh, subsite. Uh, dedicated to that. And then uh, Nessus.org is actually a security scanning tool. This is free. Security scans from McAfee cost $341 minimum starting price. And if you are kind of bigger, you have a bunch of IPs you got to go through, it just starts jumping. Um, there are other companies, and you got to imagine it's going to cost you guaranteed somewhere around 500 bucks, if not more, to have a company scan you and then basically send you the report if you failed or not. A lot of them give you free. Uh, scans over time so you know you buy in once and then you just do your best to get compliant and you keep scanning your site if at any time you hook up with a company and they will charge you per scan look around because everybody is again doing it's kind of like the smog free retesting you know if you fail the smog you can come back for a free retest that kind of thing for your car so I'm gonna post uh, these slides up immediately after this session so they'll be up and then on the uh, on the session notes uh, we'll I'll actually have the link there so it'll be up uh, so I'm done with really the slides. Like I said, there were only a few slides. I'm going to flip over to my web browser. This, this is the authorized.net site. Um, basically, if you went to the link that I said, authorized.net slash PCI DSS, uh, this is the breakdown real quick. So there's a few things, and let me actually blow this up for everybody. You guys can see that? Okay, cool. So we, think, uh, we see some very basic things that a lot of us do in our daily lives or our, you know, our uh, web work, which is install and maintain a firewall. Um, now, basically, uh, they are requiring that there be a firewall on your server if credit cards 
transactions are happening, you know. Now we think, oh, well, we got SSL, that's good and all. They said, no, you have to have SSL, obviously, to sell, but now you also have to have a firewall to make sure that that computer does not get compromised because the protocol they're happy with, they're fine with, you know, that's not a big deal. It's the individual machines that end up becoming the problem. Um, uh, the user, the vendor supplied, basically, anytime you get a new server, you have to change the passwords. They cannot be the same passwords that were issued to you. Uh, you can't leave, you know, MySQL root password as root. Uh, you know, all those little things. Passwords have to be unique. Uh, they have to be strong. And uh, it's very interesting how on site they would probably test that. Um, but they go through their steps. So maybe even uh, uh, companies that have protocols where they change passwords uh, every three weeks or every week or something like that. If they show that their company has those policies and they follow it, then if you have an on-site uh, PCI compliance uh, person coming on, they'll see those protocols of your company and then you would be okay. Basically, they would check, you know, you're good there. Um, uh, you have to protect uh, stored card holder in data, which is basically, remember, like I said, like QuickBooks on the machine. Um, if you have a database and you're storing credit cards for some God awful reason. <laughs> uh, you have to go through a lot of loops to make sure that those are not going to be plucked out and compromised. Do not store anything. Um, if clients are sending orders and it's sending just an email and the credit card number is coming over just over email, you are doing it totally wrong. Um, you should not have access to anything but maybe may the last four digits of the credit card number. Okay. Yes, everybody has systems, so you know you, you just need to take these recommendations and uh, uh, requirements and apply them to your business uh, and your customers. Uh, one of the other things is uh, the antivirus software. Remember I mentioned that? So they're even recommending that your server have antivirus software. And now I noticed a lot of the cloud server uh, systems like uh, SoftLayer and all that, they're giving either Norton or McAfee server antivirus software free. Um, like right when you spawn a new virtual instance, that's built in now. So I think what it is is since they had to go through PCI compliance of a different form, that now that they basically turn on uh, a free antivirus tool, it's on you and you're the idiot if you didn't say, yeah, turn it on by default. Um, and it's free. <laughs> Why not? A uh, bunch of uh, business need to know. So again, like people who only have to deal with the credit card information or the orders for the day only should know how to access that information. Okay. So a bunch of different things like that. Uh, regularly testing is a big thing. So everybody has to go through quarterly tests. And if you're in a lower tier in uh, the amount of money that you make, uh, then you actually get to do uh, those tests yourself and they get to be validated externally. Um, the validation is recommended when you're at the very bottom tier. It's not required, but once you start just moving up one tier, it's a requirement for these tests. Um, so the tests are basically like an antivirus scan every quarter. Um, you, uh, you basically run a, a scan against your ports to make sure there's no open ports. So basically you attack your machines every quarter to make sure that they're still plugged up fine. Okay. Uh, let me see. Go on. So right here is the tier systems of the merchant levels. So here's the first three. Uh, again, six, uh, six million Visa transactions per year is the top tier. Okay. So uh, right there you see that they actually have to do, if you do that much transactions through Visa, you actually have to have an on-site security audit come down. So you have to go through the self-assessments, you have to make sure everything is good, and you've got to wait for somebody to come with their clipboard and go through everything with you, and then they will give you an assessment at the end. Um, validation is done by independent security accessors. That's like I said, McAfee, that charges three forty one dollars a year. So uh, there's different companies all over the place. Uh, oh, and actually, you can't just find some random open source tool to do the security scan if that tool is not considered to be kind of a valid tool or the company is not certified for PCI compliance checking, okay? Um, they will not accept that. Uh, let me see. So the qualified in the top tier, basically that's going to be the big companies that paid the PCI security organization a lot of money to get a nice big badge that, hey, we are qualified. The next tier under is uh, no, see first qualified independent scan and then the rest are merchants so these are the smaller companies that have the technology that it does the requirements but they didn't pay the crazy amount of money up to visa to get certified as a partner for PCI compliance but they're still assessed they're checked you know they're, they are vent, uh, uh, um, they're, they are vetted um, but again it starts the regulations start to get looser as you go down the tier so um, my client and actually most 
In fact, I think Authorize.net said something like 80 or 90 percent of their user base is all in level four. Okay, level four is less than 20,000 Visa or MasterCard e-commerce transactions, um, and up to a million transactions per year. That means swiping the card. Okay, so about a million swipes, and then uh, less than 20,000 transactions online. So we see here that. Uh, there is, for the other tiers, annual self-assessment questionnaires and quarterly scans, and those are required. In Tier 4, it is only recommended for the PCI assessment uh, uh, questionnaire. I have that questionnaire actually open right here. So there are about like a few different, I think it's like five or four different PDFs. Uh, and again, like this one's like 21 pages, but this is a questionnaire. So uh, you'll, you'll go through the, the, you'll have to read everything and see what type you're going to be to this questionnaire and once you understand those points you literally have to go through and fill out everything and understand and basically this is like your test you know this is your quiz so you go through this and this is kind of your report that you actually have to fill out and keep on site because any day one of these companies the PCI companies can say send us your report we got a, we like the business bureau hit us up. They said there's a problem. Somebody reported an issue against your website. Send us your self assessment tests. The questionnaires, it's got to be filled out. So if you're not filling this out, at least just to get started, you're already lacking the paperwork required uh, that somebody's going to ask you for at some point. Okay. Uh, what was the next uh, link that I wanted to go to? Oh, uh, now also the merchant scan. Basically, they said uh, the compliance is mandatory for all level four. Um, I'm sorry, everything but I. I went through everything, and it's a big pain to read this stuff to fill out the paperwork. It has been a lot of work, and honestly, I under uh, underestimated how much work it was going to be to help my client out, and I underbid the work. So I'm finishing it for my client, and, I, and I've worked with him for over 10 years. So he's a cool guy, and we like each other, and I'm helping him out, even though I'm going to lose money on this. But the knowledge I'm gaining is going to be very valuable for the next 5, 10 years, for sure, going on forward. People who are barely new to the Internet, people have to update their website. So this stuff is very important, very heavy information. And even though things are, strong, are recommended and they're not required, um, if you really don't have to do it in your tier, still try to at least you know assess like, well, is this going to be good for me to just review and understand? Because your business can blow up. Like, I mean, yeah, that's always a talk. Like, hey, we can end up making a lot more money next year. But if you really do blow up, immediately the companies are going to watch you, and Visa is going to say, oh, by the way, you passed the one million mark. You're in a different tier now. Um, when are we going to get your updated PCI compliance report? You know, because they are really adamant about this. Another thing is they're making a lot of money on this right now. I mean, the companies are spending a shit ton of money, I found out, consulting for PCI compliance. Huge amounts of money. So, again, I underestimated this amount of work. Don't think it's like I'm going to read a PDF or two and kind of be done with it and turn some settings on. It is a lot of work. It's a lot of going back, rereading, and making sure that I, you hit all those bullet points. So, it, it's been... Uh, it's been weeks if not almost months of work randomly that I have tried to collect this information. So uh, this is the PCI security standards uh, website. So they're actually doing uh, meetings which is pretty neat. Uh, unfortunately none of them are in our area yet. So uh, they're actually doing things and they're publishing videos online. So the official site has a lot of information. Go there. Um, but I'm going to show you the ones that have really helped me out. So the first one that really helped me out was uh, one of the links, it's this Neospire site. Uh, they do hosting, but they have this page, and it's the top 10 misconceptions about PCI. And this really helped me uh, kind of get through some of the information quicker um, because it basically it was like I had an assumption if I read something, and then when I found this blog post, my assumptions were incorrect. Um, or also maybe I was just literally kind of going a little bit overboard, you know, and kind of my fears because <laughs> I'm a little neurotic that way. Um, but this is important stuff for me. This is security. So um, that PCI data standards, uh, DSS, that it's a requirement, uh, a recommendation, not a requirement. Uh, that is false. Uh, it is a requirement. Every company you see here, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, uh, Visa is the one that kind of started this, which I thought was genius because, you know, it's not about making money in the market. It's actually creating the market. So you're the only one that's making money off of it. Visa did this, basically. Okay, so people were, huh? 
I was saying, especially when they bought CyberSource. Uh, and there's been a lot of questioning about that acquisition. Um, for uh, yeah, for people that know, don't know, Visa's been doing some acquisitions that have been very questionable in their industry. Um, so people are asking the government to look at this. So there might even be some changes in the next two years, uh, just some refinements. But everybody's jumping on board with this because they already get your money now. Now they get extra money from you every year. You know, every year. So it's uh, it's uh, it's it's healthy for some of the businesses that have been you know been doing stuff and complacent with e-commerce. Um, antivirus scan. Uh, oh wait, no, that's a different one. Uh, just passing a scan. Oh, uh, basically, if you run a tool and it says, "Hey, you're all good," all green lights comes up. Oh, I'm good and I'm compliant. And that is only one part of the whole process. Okay, that is one assessment. That is one report that you get and compile with the rest of everything else. So don't think that you just throw a bunch of antivirus and port scanners at it and you're good and done. Okay, that's that, again. That's only the technical part of it. Uh, I don't hold too many credit cards, uh, so I don't have to be compliant. You know. No big deal. I'm too small of a company. Doesn't matter. You're still going to get dinged. Uh, I don't store credit card information. Now it's funny. This is the biggest one I hear all the time now when I read online. Well, we don't store credit card info. We use PayPal or we use Authorized.net. That's that's not the case. It's going through your site in some manner at some point. So you're part of the chain. Hence, you are part of the uh, the problem. <laughs> as Visa sees it. So now Visa is even offering this whole thing where it'll jump off your site, which is very old kind of e-commerce ways of doing it, but it jumps off your site. They fill out the Visa form, but it has branding for your company. And that has helped some companies assume that they're PCI compliant. It's not totally the case, but it is getting this, the people who don't really have like an IT guy on staff. Like It's kind of like the easy PayPal thing. Oh, they have a form. We don't have to do any integration. We'll get the orders in you know, via email and stuff. So there are different things. Uh, and actually, immediately after, uh, they talk about, well, I use authorized.net or PayPal, so I should be compliant because they are doing things for me. That is not true. In fact, when you watch the videos and read the authorized.net stuff, they are clear. We have no responsibility in this. So they have hooked up with a company called Trustwave, and Trustwave is doing what I said McAfee's doing. They're charging an annual fee for doing these uh, quarterly scans for you. So it'll give you a report, and you can run it you know, four times a year. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, oh, yeah, if you're a small merchant, this kind of goes back to uh, I'm too small, uh, because you do get fined, and the fines are freaking huge. Okay, it's, they're really big fines. Um, and at the minimum is you're going to be basically on a bad list, and they can revoke your whole merchant system, they can revoke your visa access to accept credit cards. And if you're a business that's online and you lose three, four days, that could be a lot of money for you, you know? And if it takes you weeks to fix it, you're really, really screwing yourself. So uh, I'm not gonna go through the rest of all these, uh, but uh, I have the links for you, please read these. This Neospire helped me just understand what is true and what is not true from just some, some very simple reading. Um, the next one that was great for me, uh, and actually before I jump into this, I learned about this security tool, which is in my links, Nessus. Um, I use that with a open source firewall. And the way I found out about this was through this blog site, uh, the Instacarma site. So this guy actually set up uh, his customer who uh, was running on Webhost Manager, which is what I had my clients on. And so he went through a bunch of stuff, and this link's there, but basically he gives uh, the information about how he set up the firewall, uh, what you have to do. Now, one of the rules in Apache, and this might be interesting, but basically Apache, when you go to a uh, file not found by default, you get the Apache version number and all the extra, it's like all at the bottom. Uh, and basically what happens is that gives hackers too much information. That has to, and it's not required, has to be trimmed down to the most bare minimum. So all it would say is basically Apache 2.0, not even the substrings that we're normally used to. So you don't want to give up that information. Um, and turning things off, basically like having PHP not expose itself as you know PHP on the server, all these little things, uh, you basically just have to kind of turn those things off. And a lot of it is on by default. So this, is, this really uh, echoes their whole thing where they don't want people leaving the defaults on, on passwords, on server configurations. You know? So by them requiring that even the Apache setup is at bare minimum uh, of the information it displays on incorrect files found, 
Uh, to them, they see that as, okay, you were taking action already that you changed uh, what the server is outputting. A uh, lot of different weird things in here. Uh, encryption modules, they want you to use a certain version. Uh, so there's a lot of little things in here. Uh, and then this is where I actually found about the Nessus scanner. Uh, it's free. So just to at least get started so you're not like, you know, honing up a few hundred dollars just to learn how to do this stuff. Uh, this scanner is going to do a lot of the basic stuff right out of the box. In fact, for level four merchants, and I think level three, this tool is valid enough to do the self-security assessments. Okay, so you can use this tool, it is valid. It will give you the assessment report. You keep that on file, you check yourself quarterly, make sure your software is up to date, and then you fill out all the paperwork in the questionnaire. And really, after all that, then you will get a better perspective if you are close to PCI compliance or compliant itself. So it's a lot of work. I hope I shared enough information to get you guys going. Um, I'm actually gonna post the slides, but I'll actually grab the links, copy them, and put them right into the session notes. So they're all there, so you guys could just jump to those right away, even later today, without waiting for a PDF to upload and all that. So a very short list of links. Questions? Uh, yes, we'll start here and go back. The burden of compliance, of course, would go to the merchant. But could the merchant um, come back around and you know, sue the web designer? OK, good question. So uh, the merchant is the one who's going to get fined. It, uh, and your question was, um, would the development company actually uh, be um, responsible legally uh, if that merchant got fined. In your contracts, you will have to now make sure that is specifically defined, if it's not already, that anything that happens to them in terms of fines and all that is really on them and their responsibility. Now, they might, I would assume, because my mom's a lawyer and I've done a bunch of this stuff, so they would probably maybe even still try to sue you for that money. Um, but I think with these requirements and compliance, we have a lot more backup info that we can say, well, look, we already did everything that we were supposed to. They didn't pay a maintenance contract and it was on them. And then I would imagine, you know, you kind of would be able to get away with uh, not, you know, basically uh, not being legally liable uh, for that. But if you don't have those clauses, if you don't have those details in your contracts, it would be very easy for you to end up stuck in court, uh, going and spending a lot of money. And even if you came out not liable, you went through a big headache just because it was not in the contract. So, uh, Dan. What open source uh, firewall do you use? CSF. In fact, the, um, the blog post that really helped me out uh, in doing a lot of the setup, that is exactly the same firewall um, that he said. APF is another one uh, that he recommends. I have no clue what APF is. Uh, but CSF, uh, that actually tied into my web host manager uh, administration. So as soon as I installed it via terminal, and refreshed, it literally had a configuration screen. So I was getting my reports in Webhost Manager. I didn't have to do anything in Terminal after that. I was like, oh, thank Lord. Um, and the report was very good. I mean, in 20 minutes after the first report, I was already closing a bunch of the things off and getting more green lights in red. So, and, and that one's free, uh, very easy to install. Very common, I found out. Uh, any more questions? Yes. Can you recommend the hosting provider that comes <coughs> server if we're not setting up your own server? Um, I checked, I had a client, literally, I'm getting text messages from a client who's ordering a new cloud server from the planet, who's now joining SoftLayer. Uh, they have a $55 uh, upsell service that is server security and monitoring, and the security itself is 45 So you get another service for 10 bucks more. And I told them for 55 bucks, they're going to do not the PCI compliance, but they'll do the firewall for us. So we don't have to configure that and go through that, but we'll run the reports on that. So if you are not comfortable, um, <coughs> you can pick up services that will get you some of the tools and things done, but nobody is advertising direct PCI compliance because you as an organization or your merchant client has to do that themselves. So that's why authorized.net has been very adamant about saying, we are not responsible because that's a big misconception. I was going to say, um, yeah, when you go through those IRC, uh, scan reports on the server, they'll give you just this big checklist of what, what they found and uh, what you need to do to gain compliance, like upgrade, open SSH, mm -hmm. turn off like, the server signature and all that stuff. I have a server with HostGator, and I guess they get that a lot, and I asked them if they could help me. I would have to make kind of something to check with, and then maybe they help me just you know, figure it. So it's really interesting. 
Yeah, um, I mean, uh, so here's like, yeah, he was saying open SSH and then open SSL, there's a minimum requirement version because of the, uh, uh, some of the algorithm strings that you end up putting in saying that I want to use these algorithms for security. That's all up in here. Uh, one of the ones that I found funny besides the Apache, how like you don't want it to say everything, was uh, disabling mod user directory. This was awesome in the old Earthlink days. <laughs> when Earthlink dialogue was popular, basically there would be the, uh, uh, you guys see this real quick? You guys see uh, HTTP server IP username? Do you guys remember that? Universities do this a lot. So your home folder has that little character right there. We, that is not allowed anymore. You cannot have, that has to be turned off. If you're running e-commerce on the same server that you have friendly hosts and fun stuff like that going on, you know, as they consider it, you have to remove it's separated, two different boxes, whatever. And especially with cheap cloud servers and virtualization, I, I mean, you should be able to move a lot of those fun, you know, things over somewhere else uh, while ma maintaining PCI compliance or actually working towards that on the important part of the server. So, any last questions? No? Does anybody have any tips or uh, uh, um, have they been working on this too as well? No, I do actually have a last question. Yes. Um, you said that you had undergraded the amount of time that you would be spending. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you for a dollar amount, but would it be possible for you to get a sense of how much I can tell you hours. You think of bidding? Yeah. So I thought, and I told my client, I'd go, worst case scenario, about a week or two. Yeah. Okay. And I said it's now taking me in about a total of almost months. And the amount of hours, I, I can run a report, no, 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 not months straight. But going back, doing more, going back, doing more, going back. And we have till October for the first round of checks and requirements. And then there was, for the smaller vendors, a push till December. But basically, you got to start now. So if it clicks over to 2011 and you haven't done anything, you're already out of compliance. You know, you're going to be asked and you're going to probably get reviewed. Your merchant company is going to say, hey, we need to make sure that you are actually doing your self-assessments. You know, so... It's going to get hairy at the end of the year, and I wouldn't be surprised that there's going to be a flood of people going, I didn't know. You know, that's, it's, it's crazy right now. So what hour, oh, um, hour amount? So uh, if I had to guess how many hours, uh, so I estimated, let's say, let's say I estimated maybe about um, uh, 40, uh, about 80 hours, right? If I thought about, at worst case scenario, I told them it was 80 hours, I probably have spent in the reading, uh, configuration, and learning, and trying to find free tools. I mean, I'm trying to really do it cheap, because my client doesn't have that much money. And I figured if I could do it cheap, then I could do it for myself. Um, I have probably uh, accumulated now, I've gone from 80, I'm well over uh, probably 130 hours. And it's been a lot of random things. Um, again, I'm like literally tooling into the server. If I wasn't the system administrator, that time would have been greatly reduced because I could have sent an issue ticket and said, hey, these need to be up to date. Uh, I need this stuff installed. And that would have been a whole chunk of a lot of hours uh, taken away from me. So the $55 a month actually seems really, really worth it because I charge way more per hour. Yeah. By any chance, would you uh, be using, uh, you talk about virtual service. Mm -hmm. Would you be using, well, I'm using one at GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. And I know they would not let me update mm -hmm. the, oper the operating system. Mm -hmm. Go on. Uh, so I'm wondering, uh, from what I'm hearing, I'm not compliant. Yeah. I'm going, I've, I've got to go someplace else. So I, I, uh, I am dealing with this uh, also with the same client. Um, he was spending over a few hundred bucks a month on a server, mm -hmm. and he doesn't need that much processing power anymore. We've done a lot of reports, and he says, okay, we could trim it down. And I found a server for $90 a month, which gives us enough of you know to go on. And from 300 bucks to 90 I mean, I dropped it down to 30% of his cost, basically. It wasn't enough for him. He wanted to try to squeeze it down more, and I told him, you can't do that. He said, well, what's the difference between us getting a box for 89 and me paying $17.99 to be part of a shared virtual server? You can't update the operating system. You might have root access, but they're going to have some limits. You are dependent on them. So since the hosting companies are not advertising that the server is PCI ready as opposed to compliant, you're already kind of hurting yourself because you are at, their, at the mercy of those people to update, to keep things up to date, to make sure that that firewall is not just on, but not at the default settings, which most of these hosting companies do. So, you know, I told my client, I go, look, okay, you could pay 18 bucks a month. Yeah, that's going to be 60 bucks cheaper, but how much are you going to lose per day if you get nicked for not being compliant? And 60 bucks 
is nothing. You know, I, so I know for him he wants to squeeze it down, but you're going to lose a lot of money in the long run if you do anything crazy. I, I know I came in late. Yes. But uh, just on, on this particular area, uh, some clients on like compliance and firewall rules on the host PC versus the container in a virtual situation. Yes. I, I'm dealing with a similar kind of situation. I don't know if people are familiar with our VPS code or how, but some language people got together and put this together. And I've just spent the past month moving all my stuff from my own box, mm -hmm. which cost me $100 a month to code okay, to a virtual share. Now, I have complete control. I'm mm -hmm. running Bluetooth. 10.04, and I keep it up to date, mm -hmm. right? And I have close connection with people that control the host operating system. But what's the relationship when it comes to compliance? Um. In that scenario, the company who is doing the host, they would have a, le a level of PCI readiness. Like, you know, like these are the things we've done. We're done at that level. Like, that's the, where they draw the line. So if you can get that information, then you know what you don't have to do yourself, and then you only fill in like the missing pieces. Um, so it, it, again, I, I found it very interesting that I see people that are certified to be PCI compliant uh, um, consultants, but nobody has PCI ready servers. I'm sure if I launch it tomorrow, I'd start making 200 grand a month and people picking it up out of fear, you know, just because of a tagline, you know, PCI, PCI ready. Um, so uh, I I would love to find out more because of the virtualization, like the host separation and the rules and responsibilities. Um, I plan to keep updating the Drupal uh, LA website. There's a thread that we have going. Dave actually started it, uh, and then there's another thread on Drupal.org. So I plan to keep updating that information yeah, as I find it. Uh, yeah, it's all in the it's all in the registration room. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So come by, pick up a free pin, buy a shirt, you know, stuff like that. So. All right, uh, any last questions, anything to share? Um, just, Again, this is a boff, so it's not even supposed to be formal, but I'm trying to give up the information I have. No, uh, one of the things that, that I uh, ran into that I thought that was kind of interesting when I, I was getting this stuff set up is that if you're, you or your client isn't PCI compliant, right, you know, when you get your merchant account and your authorized account like all set up, you can still process transactions. Mm -hmm. You'll just have a PCI non-compliance uh, penalty or fee mm -hmm. just added to your monthly statement, so that's just... So you get charged monthly. Okay, so then that's basically probably to help people not freak out that they're going to get cut off October and December. They make money as they go along, and then it just is incentivizing you to try to, yeah, okay. So is it cheaper just to pay the fee than to bother with all For some people it might be, and that's going to be a little bit unfortunate. I don't think the long run that's not going to be the case. From your merchant company. Oh, yeah. You know what? That's a good point. This year it's twenty nine bucks. Nobody says anything about when December first clicks over. Uh, if they announce that they're going to change it for another month later in that year, that's true. Mm -hmm. So most likely that's when the fee would be change. Or, or and they're in on this together. They know. They're in the committees. They're in, in yeah. their organization. So they know what months that they want right. to tune the, uh, the meter. That is, that is on their site, July 2011. Okay. I, I saw a hand, yes. Um, I was just wondering about what this would have to do with um, sort of the, like the hardware scanners themselves. Is there something going on with that? I yeah, actually, uh, that Nessus tool, I mean, it does port scan, I mean, it's... Well, I'm, I'm uh, talking more about, uh, my parents, they have a tow company, and they have the scanner that you run the card through and everything. Oh, yeah. There's nothing that attached to the computer whatsoever. Is there there are still some compliance regulations they have to adhere to. They are totally different from what I've been outlining. Yeah. But, yes, they have all new rules for even if you're just swiping the card. Yeah, big time. So uh, that's why it's been a lot of reading because the place I work for, they don't do just website. They're a print shop. Mm -hmm. So they have clients coming in. Uh, and in fact, they don't swipe credit cards. They use the point of sale system authorized.net gives them uh, on the computer. So, you know, right away I was like, is your, you know, is the password protected? No. You know, the computer itself, you know, he's like, no, it's just me. 
I'm like, no, I go, look, it says on the paper. And he's like, okay, well, what password should I give him? I'm like, look, I don't care. You know, just something, you know, put it on. But uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just not password. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Um, yeah, so there are different regulations. So that's why I started early. And I don't know if you were here, but I did an offline piece. I was there here for the offline. Yeah, piece. it was one bullet point, but there's tons, and it changes depending on your tier. Okay. Yeah. So it, it didn't make sense for me to go over a lot of those points because the online stuff is more important to us Drupal yeah, developers here. Yeah. I understand it's just when you started talking about the penalty. Uh, yeah, I right? More, so. Um, so we have uh, we have 11 more minutes in this room. Um, if there's no more questions, I mean, I could let you guys out early. Uh, you know, I got to get back to the booth, but I don't have to go until 2.30. So if there's questions, please bring them up. If not, you know, you guys can hang and talk a little bit. No, no questions. Just slightly off topic. Okay, go for it. Um, is, is everybody here using secure pages for UCSSL? 